Hello everyone, this is Cole from Regal Metalworks. Hey, we're back today doing a little bit more prototyping for Troy Sowers. We had originally worked on a polisher holder for him and he brought it over. I basically did this sight unseen. He brought his largest polisher over and we had a, a couple uh, revisions on it. We just need to move these arms out a little bit, half an inch, which I did. And um, take a quarter inch off of this spacer piece and uh, basically invert these bends so they're going in so you don't see them. Uh, originally that's how I designed it but I ended up bending them outwards only due to my press brake that I had the dies get in there but I rectified that situation. So I made a new drawing and uh, it's not that. It's this guy here and if we exit the flat you can see it. New drawing. I call it the scorpion because <laughs> it looks like a scorpion, well, sort of. But you can see that it now bends inward. It's a little bit wider up here. I lengthened it down through here, and instead of having my bends right here, I went ahead and put them on the straight because it's a lot easier to get into to bend. And um, I think we'll be fine. I lengthened it in through here so it's a little longer because it was looking a little short and stout. So I made it just a little bit longer. This I guard I shortened. It actually was hitting the trigger. So I figured we can lengthen it here a little bit and we'd be able to avoid that on the bigger polisher. And it should fit the smaller polishers just fine because it's all standard four inch uh, head right here. So the biggest thing was the offset of the polisher head um, because it moves back and forth on the head. It was bumping into the sides here a little bit and you know, we can enlarge that a little bit so that you can just plop it up there and not have a problem, not have to like wiggle it or at, at all to make it fit. So. I went ahead and uh, already cut this out on the plasma uh, in 2D. So all I have to do now is, is do some bends. So that's what I'm going to go work on. And I have some sheets and stuff drawn up. You can see my last cutout a little bit wider. You can see it runs always to the edge and to the edge. Where the ones before it were a little bit narrow. So we added about an inch overall. You can see those were on an angle. Now they're straight. Yeah, it's just a little bit longer overall. That guy's a little bit shorter on this one. So I didn't video any of that except for Instagrams. Instagrams, I got the, I got some new filters on there. Some uh, zoom or whatever. It's pretty cool. It zooms in and plays like the dun dun dun, which is pretty cray cray. Cause that's my <laughs> text message. So <clears throat> here I printed out the the bend sheet here. Here's the piece that's actually cut out. It actually did a really good job. Had very little dross on it. So, and this is just a prototype. And this is uh, normally I use cold rolled steel. This is just hot rolled steel I had laying around, scrap. So I was like, oh, I'll just use that and throw it in the tumbler. Because the tumbler removes all that. This takes a little longer in uh, post process. It takes, I don't know, about two hours to remove all the mill scale. Where on the cold roll, you don't have any mill scale, so it looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and set this up and do a little bending for you. I was getting ready to bend these up and I just I remembered that these dies, I didn't have them welded together. And when you clamp them into the top clamp on the, the press, they get a little not even. See how that's kind of like not even? No matter how even you want it to get, as soon as you clamp it down, it's gonna move. And it kind of leaves these little divot marks that from each finger, so every half inch you have a different type of bend. So I want to go ahead and clean that up. I'm just gonna weld four of these together because that's two inches and then four of these together and then I'll put them on the belt sander and kind of make it all one so that I get a good clean bend so I'm going to set that up and tack that weld that up quick for you guys
just need to clean that up so we don't have any transitions between here because that will show in the metal. Also clean these up on the belt sander so they're nice and straight. We'll take us over to the belt sander. close. Getting hot. I gotta go cool it down a little bit. So we got a little closer with this design, although I ran into some issues with getting these legs. These hit this upper end leg was hitting this one in the press, but aesthetically it looks nicer. I just got to figure out how we're going to bend it better, more consistently, I should say. Okay see the difference between the two here, two prototypes. This one I end up having to make a bottom die to get some of the bends finished. Um, moving over to this guy, we re redesigned it, moved the bends inside, so that you have these type of feet here, where you just screw into the wall, place this over it, and pull it down, and it looks like it's floating on the wall there. Had some issues with uh, a couple of the bends. So that's just part of prototyping. Then, even though it, it's straight on where this one's on, on an angle, I was actually hitting up here inside on my die. It got a little wonky. So I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board, maybe space this out down a little bit further so we have even more room so this clears so it's not hitting. Not a major issue, but. I'm sure if I had a better hydraulic press brake, this won't be a problem at all. So, threw it in the tumbler, you can see it started to remove some of the mill scale. Like, this was only about 15 minutes. You can see some of the areas where it just kind of blasted it off. It would need about two hours to get done. 
Well, we went ahead and you can see here, it's actually a little bit wider. The mouth is the same. This is just a little bit wider for the, the large polishers will actually fit in here. They won't hit this edge if it's off to the side since they rotate that way as well as spin. And then we move these guys from here to here so that I could bend it in a little easier because on the angle it would have been next to near impossible to get a bend in. So still prototyping. We'll drop this down a little bit. And it almost looks like it came out the same. <laughs> same height. And I did really I left in that. Almost came out the same height too. Well, I'll have to play around with cabs and, and, and try and figure out where we're going with that. I wasted a bunch of time today on these dies because what was happening, as you can see it here, the swag off road dies, they're not, they don't line up. Even when you bolt them in, they don't line up right. You're supposed to weld them. So, what I did was I welded it here, and it's hard to keep these straight. They're laser cut. And half inch on, on the laser cutter is always pretty sketchy. And I went ahead and sanded this, and I started on this one as well. I sanded those one initially, but I got it so out of square sanding it that I actually had to put it back into the mill and square it up so that I can get a good square because I couldn't even get a 90 degree bend. So I didn't end up using these, and I didn't really go out of too too aggressively, but you can definitely catch a fingernail <laughs> running across here and you you would see that in a bend maybe if you can get this just a little bit better I mean that feels pretty good but I mean your dies whatever the, however accurate this die is if it's perfectly square it's going to give you a nice crisp bend so working with the swag off-road stuff although it's, it's great for what it is and it's affordable I mean it's just not it's just not industrial standards but after machining this here square and then machining this top here square and then just rounding the edge a little bit with the palm sander it gave me a pretty decent bend I can see it in there you can see it here it's hard to tell with the mill scale but it, it gave a pretty good uh, crisp bend there's a little bit of deformation on the one end compared to the straight across but it's still way better than the deformation you're getting from all the individual dies almost acts like a, a solid piece even though it's four half inch dies but that, that seemed to work out okay but yeah I foresee probably a press break in the near future at some point um, if I start picking up and doing more and more sheet metal work which kind of coincides with having a CNC plasma it kind of makes sense so that's about it for the day I'm heading home I'll probably throw that back in the tumbler tomorrow try and get it cleaned up a little bit I'll let the customer know but that's about it for the day. So if it's the first time tuning in to a, the channel, I hope you enjoyed what you saw. This is just a little prototyping typing I've been doing because I broke my hand and I'm trying to do as light work as possible without re-injuring that and it's very difficult. So go ahead and subscribe, tell your friends, and we'll see you next time.